Hello and welcome to what's in this week's Open Times with me, Sandy Neal, and me, Owen Wild. Well, it's me and Owen this week giving you a little insight into just some of the stories that are in the Open Times. You can read all the stories and lots more online by going to westcoasttoday.co.uk or picking up a printed copy in newsagents, supermarkets and petrol stations. We love hearing from you and getting your pictures and stories, so why not email us at editor at opentimes.co.uk or messaging us on Facebook. Owen, what have you been up to this week? Well, Sandy, it's been a busy week in Holyrood. With all the buzz around the general election, Scottish government stories have fallen under the radar. But big developments have occurred in the wood-burning stove ban debate. For context, new legislation made it illegal to install stoves in new homes unless it could be proven essential. There was significant backlash, with many, including Kate Forbes, arguing that the stoves are a lifeline appliance for rural communities. It was announced earlier this week that a debate on the matter is happening today, led by the Conservatives, and now the SNB has announced a review into the legislation. It's also been busy in Tobermory. I was at the fire station open day on Saturday, which was raising funds for the firefighters' charity. The event raised £1,700, so well done to all the crew in Tobermory. There is also a new worker housing scheme being built in Tobermory. Twelve homes, made especially for incoming workers, both permanent and seasonal, are being constructed at Rockfield. Molaniona Community Trust and Argyll and Butte Council are working on the project to help ease housing and staffing shortages on Mull, and say the homes will never be used as holiday lets. Well, thank you very much, Owen. That's a lot packed into this week. So from me, building work has started on the Rockfield Centre's new open-air amphitheatre, a strong sign that the community hub is back on firmer ground. Now, it is almost 30 years since an RAF Chinook helicopter crashed into a hillside on the Mull of Kintyre on June 2, 1994, killing all 29 people on board and plunging the peninsula into one of the darkest days in its history. Despite the incident being the RAF's worst peacetime loss of life, the Ministry of Defence has not arranged any official memorials to mark the 30th anniversary, something that has angered and disappointed family members of some of those killed in the crash. And with a UK general election looming on July the 4th, people in and around Oban can put their questions to the country's decision makers and public figures in a live TV show audience find out more in this week's paper. More than 30 people turned out to support the inaugural meeting of a campaign group calling for a a kidney dialysis unit at Lawn and Island Hospital. A charity providing free breaks for bereaved families has launched a £50,000 appeal for a second respite caravan. And quadriplegic adventurer Jeff Holt docked last week at Open Bay during his finishing the dream journey. A three-day city experience in Glasgow gave Primary 7 pupils from St Columbus Primary School in Oban lots to smile about and a new bishop has been chosen in the Diocese of Argyll and the Isles. Finally, the Oban and District Provincial Mod takes place this Friday and Saturday, celebrating Gaelic culture and language and all the fun of the fair will be in Oban this Saturday when the town hosts its annual Charities Day. So, that's all from us this week. Don't forget to pick up your copy of The Open Times online or or in shops. And so it's goodbye from me, Sandy Neal. And goodbye from me, Owen Wilde. Bye. Bye.